Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also on our website. Also, we would love for you to subscribe wherever you're listening to our podcast. It really helps more people hear about us. And if you're on Facebook, join our community. Just look for a daily Bible podcast under groups. Oh, and we are so encouraged that you are still with us. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's Reading through Bible is not easy, and especially with some of the passages that we have gone through and we have read through. So thank you so much for putting in the hard work and doing that. We are over halfway through the Bible, and right now we are in the Psalms, and I just sort of feel like we are taking like a cool dip in a lake on a hot day. That's what it feels like. It's just refreshing. It's so refreshing. Okay, so we today we read Psalm 128. Psalm 129, Psalm 130, 132, 134, and 135. And it, it, there's so many beautiful passages in mm-hmm. these Psalms. Um, Psalm 128 is a beautiful reflection of the blessings of fearing the Lord and walking in his ways. And it describes fruitfulness and prosperity and happiness that result from a life within a family and a community. And it concludes the blessing for the individual, their family, and all of Jerusalem. And one thing to note is a reference to prosperity here. It says, you will enjoy the fruit of your labor, how joyful and prosperous you will be. So the good life here isn't wealth, wealth, like cash, money, gold, all those things, but enjoying the fruit of your labor. Mm. I think sometimes we read these words and we just like, oh, the Bible talks about being prosperous. Well, this is what it's talking about. Enjoying the fruit yeah. of your labor is prosperity. So that was one cool thing that I, that really stood out to me. And then in Psalm 129, the writer speaks of intense afflictions from youth, likened to a farmer plowing long furrows on their back. And it says, my back is covered with cuts as if a farmer had plowed long furrows. And that's like, ouch, right there, ouch. Um, But also it reminded me kind of of the lashes that tore into Jesus' Mm. back. I don't know. The commentaries I read didn't say that. It just kind of reminded me of that, that he did get those lashes. Um, But the writer affirms that the wicked have not prevailed and their efforts are in vain. And then the psalm ends with a call for God's justice against the wicked and blessings for those who love Jerusalem. And I love how so many of these Psalms talk about Jerusalem. It just reminds you like this is a holy city and um, an important city to the nation of Israel. And then Psalm 130 is a song of ascent and one of the penitential Psalms. I think that's how you say that. Um, But a penitential Psalm is a category of Psalms characterized by themes of repentance and requests for forgiveness from God. So remember David had, I think Psalm 51, where he was really repentant after his sin with Bathsheba. So all these songs are deeply personal, personal, and they display a genuine remorse for sins and they commit a desire for reconciliation with God. So there's a number of these Psalms, but this is one of them. And the writer cries out to God from the depths of personal despair, longing for God's mercy and forgiveness. There's a sense of waiting and hoping for God, for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. And the psalm closes with encouragement for Israel to expect the Lord, for with him is unfailing love and a plentiful redemption. And Michelle, you, you know, you're saying, remember the time in history. Remember that these are gathered by Hezekiah during this time where they, most of them have gone astray. And I love that this psalm is one of they know they have messed up. And they're crying out to God for help and forgiveness. And that we have these words. So when we feel like, oh, man, I've really messed up. I need God's forgiveness. We can go and we can use these words of the psalmist used to have our own time of confession and forgiveness before God. I love how as we're reading, we're understanding um, history better. I mean, Mm -hmm. history, the biblical history better. But I feel like we're also in that we're understanding our God better Mm -hmm. and we're understanding ourselves better. 
I mean, because as as Joe keeps reminding me, history repeats itself. It just yeah. continually repeats itself. So in Psalm 132, this is the, in this psalm, we are reminded of David and David's deep, deep love for God. I mean, remember, David, he was the one who wanted to build God's temple. He wanted a place for God to dwell. And, 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 he, and, and that was left for his son to build the temple. But he wanted a place for God to dwell. He had this deep, deep love for God. And he had made this solemn promise to the Lord. He vowed to the mighty one of Israel, I will not go home. I will not let myself rest. I will not let my eyes sleep, nor close my eyelids in slumber. Remember our word of the day yesterday? Close. David was vigilant. He did not want his eyelids to be closed in slumber until I find a place to build a house for the Lord, a sanctuary for the mighty one of Israel. And just such a good reminder Mm -hmm. that just of David's great, great love for God. And, and actually this, this passage, or especially this verse until I find a place to build a house for the Lord, a sanctuary for the mighty one of Israel is repeated a couple of times in the new Testament. Stephen refers to it. And also Peter alludes to it. It again, just letting us know that these Psalms, these words that God wrote that he had his his psalmists and other people write for him. These words were paid attention to Mm -hmm. by other people in the Bible. Like everyone knew these words by heart. They knew this. And so our New Testament heroes, they know the Old Testament heroes by heart and they referred to them time and time again. So as we continue to remember who David was, we also see his suffering and everything that he went through. There was a lot of anguish for David. He laid down his life for his God over and over again. And God blessed him, even promising that his line would be the royal line Mm -hmm. that would continue forever and ever. And then in Psalm 134 is the last of the series of 15 Psalms that were titled A Song of Ascents. It is a call to the priests and the Levites of the temple to continue their service of praise with the answer of a blessing back to the people. And Charles Spurgeon suggested that the scene The scene was of pilgrims departing Jerusalem in the darkness of an early morning, calling out to the priests and the Levites who stood watch at the temple. The pilgrims then received the blessing spoken back to them. So you got that sort of Mm -hmm. that visual in your mind. Okay, so let me let me read this psalm. Oh, praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who will serve at night in the house of the Lord. Lift your hands toward the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Jerusalem. Like, that's just that's just beautiful reading it with a little bit of context behind it. And then in Psalm 135 it's a note for for there's a the note of use of other passages from the Hebrew scriptures. Almost every verse quotes the words or the idea of another Old Testament passage, including four different Psalms, two passages from Deuteronomy, two from Jeremiah, and two from Exodus. I mean, that's, that's kind of cool. It's just, it, in some ways, it's just, it's a compilation. It's pulling together. So many times as you're reading these Psalms, you're like, I've read this before. I know I've read this before. But again, think of, Think of things as like the kaleidoscope. We're reading from different perspectives and we're getting a different perspective of history. We're getting a different perspective of the Israelites and we're getting a greater perspective of God. There was a a scholar who said of Psalm 135, every verse of this Psalm either echoes, quotes, or is quoted by some other part of scripture. And it's cool. Um, Because we were, once again, we were praising God in this psalm for his goodness, for his miraculous acts in history, for his miraculous acts right now Um, in the past. God's fame will be known through all generations. And so we're told to praise, to praise, and to praise. And I love that they had to know the psalms well enough 
to quote, I mean, know scripture well enough to quote from Deuteronomy or to quote from other Psalms. They yeah. are compiling it together. So they, in the New Testament, they knew in other Psalms, they knew, and they're just bringing them back together. That's really cool. It is really cool. Well, we need to take a break and um, hear from our sponsor. But when we come back, we'll have the word of the day. So stay tuned. The word of the day is hope. And I don't know how we got through half of the Bible without having this as the word of the day. I like that sooner. word. It's a hard word. It's a hard word to really understand and grapple mm-hmm. with. But I like that word. I do too. So hope is a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. So there were a lot of verses that speak of hope. Um, in, in this passages. So specifically, and sometimes just the general idea of hope. So Psalm 128, four through five says, yes, this will be a blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. So that they had hope in God's blessing, that God's blessing would be coming. In Psalm 129, four through five, it says, but the Lord is righteous. He has cut me free from the cords of the wicked. So they have hope in justice. Mm -hmm. Psalm 130, five through seven says, I wait for the Lord. My whole being awaits in his word. I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. So they were hoping in God's mercy. And there's more of these. I'll just read one more. Psalm 132, 13 through 15 says, For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has Mm. desired it for his dwelling, saying, This is my resting place forever and ever. Here I will sit enthroned, for I have desired it. So they have hope in God's reign. And so throughout these verses, we just see, like you mentioned, Michelle, this is, they've seen the past. Sometimes they have repented of sins. They're, they have Hezekiah now that's reminding them of the past and they have these hope of what's still to come. And so each of these verses showcase this sense of hope, hope in God's blessings, his justice, his mercy, his place of dwelling, his creation. And we should learn that hope is where we should have our foundation and not fear. Um, mm-hmm. Through hope, these Psalms invite us to journey, even through trials, that God's presence is there and he has good things planned for us. And the hope we arises and we can sing of his steadfast love and his abundant blessing and his power. So even when things are going difficult, we are hoping for something different. We have an expectation and all those expectations can be centered around God, what God can do, who God is, what God will do for us. It's all things to give us hope. Well, and I I love how they knew scripture I mean, we, we've got these, we've got these writers who knew scripture and who knew the stories, who knew the miracles of God Mm -hmm. and were able to pen that down, write that down. And so we can see that there was calamity. There were hardships in the past and yet God used that. There is hope that builds when we see how God Mm -hmm. has worked in the past Mm -hmm. and we bring it forward because it is so easy that if we forget the past, again, history repeats itself. But if we remember that God is our enduring God who has enduring love for us and enduring justice for us, then there is this hope that builds in our hearts, this hope of knowing that God is for us. God mm-hmm. will come to our rescue. God will make a way. He will guide us. He will direct us. And he will always be there for us. As long as, you know, and I don't want to say as long, we need to continue looking back and seeing what he has done. And it just expands it expands our love for him and it expand, expands our hope and our knowledge of what he can do and what he will do for us. Absolutely. And yeah, I love that. Well, we, we remember like, oh yeah, God, you showed up here and you did this and you provided in this way. And that just builds our hope 
And that hope is throughout these Psalms. That hope is echoed, like you mentioned, in the New Testament as they are um, repeating these ho- these promises from God. It's this underlying, like the string in pearls is that mm. thread of hope that we see all these events, those pearls that God showed up and hope just keeps us going. We can, we can turn to him and we can trust in him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Trisha, will you pray for us that we would just walk away today with this incredible hope that continues to build? Mm-hmm. Lord, I just thank you that you give us hope as we remember, as we reflect, as we read, um, as we just understand that you have always been there. You will always be there. You have good plans for us. And that like those in the New Testament, when they just spoke these Psalms and remembered like, no, God is with us. God is going to be there with us. We can have those hopes today that our hope will grow the more time we spend in you. We know you have a good future plan for us, Lord. Um, We are just getting a glimpse of all you have available to us, Lord. And I pray that you will help us grow in hope that we can walk out in faithful steps for you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading Psalm 136, Psalm 146, Psalm 147, Psalm 148, Psalm 149, and Psalm 150. So that's, again, is Psalm 136, Psalm 146 through 150. And I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You wouldn't be listening to Trisha and myself without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com and find other great podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God today. Also, a big thank you to Andy and Kristen. You guys are amazing. Thank you for making Trisha and I sound so good. Thank you. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.